Won't you be mine? Hi. On today's show, we're going to talk about dinosaurs. Can you say that? Dinosaur? That's the name they used to give to all those rock and roll bands a long, long time ago who used to play the big hockey auditoriums way back when, before the age of video. Why, in the 1970s. I can remember grooving to those bands long before some of you were probably even born. Then they all got fat and died, and along came the punks and they ruled the earth. But recently, I've had some pretty good news hearing that bands like Iron Butterfly and Yes, We're Getting Back Together. But best of all was the reunion of Deep Purple this week. Now, to warm you up, to show you just how great they were, I'm going to play you some things on my video machine. <laughs> Smoke on the water, isn't this great? I saw them once at the Montreal Forum when uh, Nixon was re-elected. And after Deep Purple broke up, there's John Lord. He went on to play keyboards for White Snake. And Roger Glover, he played bass with Richie Blackmore on guitar in Rainbow. And together they played some bitchin' material. I absolutely love them. And uh, who's that? Ian Gillen, I can tell by the color in his eyes. He went to play with Black Sabbath for a bit, not too long, for about a year. Man, they were far out. We heard Deep Purple was celebrating their reunion with a media conference and a party in New York City. So I flew down to try to get an interview with the band. I love New York. Just like I pictured it. Ghastly. Skyscrapers and everything. You know, when you're in New York, you've got to act real cool or else they'll know you're a tourist. Actually, no, I don't know why we got back together. I don't think it was uh, for any overt musical reason. It was the musical reason came from within us. Whatever we did, I think none of us actually knew what chemistry was that, that uh, provided us with the music and the success that we had. Um, any heavy metal revival that I've heard has been going on for about the last 10 years anyway. There's always a revival going on. And I don't think we paid any attention to current things uh, any more now than we did before. How much of the old stuff will we see on the tour? About 60% of the show, I should think. We're doing about five or six tracks from the new album. And we're going to be doing stuff like Highway Star, Smoke on the Water, Child in Time, Space Trucking, you know, Black Knight, those things. And it's lazy. Lazy, yeah. yeah. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Deep Purple are about to launch a world tour, but it won't bring them to Canada until the spring of 1985. Nor will there be a video until December. However, a new album has just been released, and I asked the lads what they're writing about these days and how it fits into the contemporary scene. I don't write lyrics terribly well. Um, I've tried and, and failed. I think Ian's lyrics, uh, along with Roger, who always had an enormous input with, with Ian on lyrics. I think they're very vital, very enjoyable lyrics. Um, and there is, for example, a song at the moment by Culture Club, which is called The War Song, yes. <laughs> uh, which uh, revels in the chorus that war is stupid and people are stupid. Uh, there is a song on the new Deep Purple album called Under the Gun, which says 55 million times more about the stupidity and futility of war uh, than Boy George and his capering will ever say in that one crass sentence. End of lecture. We actually, throughout the whole summer, when we were re rehearsing and recording, didn't once play any of the old songs. It was completely fresh. I mean, I was... Very difficult. Was that a rule you laid down? You yeah. Said, we no, were not yeah. play smoke on the water. My rule. Yeah, you didn't know about it. It just no, happened that way. It pretty much... Oh, we've done way. two weeks of rehearsals and we still haven't played that track yet. We still haven't relearned smoke on the water yet. We probably will. Yeah, we refuse to play smoke at But the problem is because we all think it's in different keys. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and Ian can't I'm remember the words. And, G. <laughs> and Ian is oh, not. I'm not. In You're not what? In any key. Oh. Not one bit has been rehearsed uh, <laughs> of those. Uh, were you making a joke with me? No, seriously. If you were, I mean, I'll rip your lungs out through your nose. I'll you know drag that. your spine out. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, can I go next? I mean, I, I went through this in 1973. You can edit. Go through it again. You can edit this bit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you, you were talking about this, this great flabby beast that, that rock music became. I don't know if I completely agree. I remember that... Autobiographical comment. 
I remember, I remember that a lot of people were saying, oh, those solos, for instance, that Richie Blackmore would come up with and, and other guitarists of his ilk. And they would go on forever and well, it, it was became, big and pompous. I loved it. It became time. fashionable to say that because they're toss props, people saying that because actually there is a guy who is more of a master of his instrument than anyone I've ever heard, apart well, from John it. and Ian and Roger. Yeah. And uh, the, the guy's solos were sensational. Yeah. It was just the sheer fact that it became fashionable to say, what's he doing on stage for half an hour on his own? You know, what's that to do with, uh, to do with music? But it was an expression of sheer, this is everything I've ever actually, done. Was, yeah. also, and I'm doing yeah. it for you tonight on stage. Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God. That's right. That's how you justify. Amen. You believe in abortion. You believe in lesbianism. You believe in faggotism. You believe in drugs. Hallelujah. You believe in the lies and murders and cheating and fornication. You tell me you can't believe. Well, folks, that's the whole sordid tale. If you really want to know the truth, I drank like a fish and got sick as a dog. Anyway, the new Deep Purple don't have...